Well, hello, everybody. It's Steph Satani coming at you with another helping and caring episode of a comedy advice podcast. I cannot wait to stop talking and get you just into the shrouds of chuckles, guffaws, chortles, even um, some hearty laughter. It's delicious. In this episode, I have very special guest, Jonathan Kite esteemed actor he was on two broke girls in the new netflix show dad stop embarrassing me with jamie fox very funny very funny show check it out and he's also coming to phoenix arizona this week the 16th and 17th cb live links where are they where are they steph they're in the show notes don't worry calm down please don't speak unless spoken to that's how this guide works uh or this tour i don't know i don't know what this is it's a weird dynamic because i just talk 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 and you guys listen 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 so you guys are, are very well actually no that's not true because you guys just seep into those dms and you guys tell me great job yeah. i'm not complaining it sounds like i'm complaining maybe i can complain because do it more please i want more of it you guys are like the weeds that grow out of the ground and make life beautiful and not weeds, perhaps flowers. Yes, you guys are blossoming plants that just I admire from afar. Thank you so much for brushing up all against my yard. Thank you. You guys are amazing. That's a weird metaphor, but I'm going to go with it. I'm sticking with it uh, in this horticulture metaphor. And I will be this gardener that just showers you with water. And the water is the words of mine and a little slobber i think because i also i'm a little messy i'm getting old now i can't control the jaw the mandibles so there's it's just like an irrigation system with the sprinklers with all my s's and plosives it's just so <laughs> oh where am i going steph stay on the road no no i'm gonna go off the road off the rails and just say i love you I told it to my wife on our like third date. And I'll tell you guys too. I love you guys so much. Thank you for all the support. Please support Jonathan. Go see him. Come see me at JP's in Gilbert. JP's Comedy Club links are going to be in the show notes for that as well. June 24th through the 26th. I'm going to be hosting. I will be your master of ceremony. So check that out. Come on over. Say hi to old long-haired Stephicles. And don't call me Steph Coles, though. That was right off the brain, and it's going to get murdered right now. We're going to stop with that, Steph Coles. So um, I think that's it, guys. Other than that, enjoy the episode. It's a short one. It's a little bonus for you, okay? And I've got plenty more episodes for you down the pike. So buckle up in your car if you're driving, and please eyes on the road, not eyes on me. I hope you're not watching on YouTube, although subscribe to YouTube, but don't watch on YouTube while you're driving. If you're mowing the lawn, that's a little bit different, just depending on how much square footage you're going to be mowing. But if you're washing dishes, I think that's okay as long as the phone doesn't fall in the sink, although the iPhones are pretty water resistant now. And uh, yeah, if you're making sweet love, I hope you are watching. Yes, please. I hope I'm on uh, I, I did see a, a big surge over the past couple of weeks. I'm on Amazon Alexa devices. So I hope right before, maybe I'm the, the pre-love making music. Maybe it's old Steph being like, because <laughs> that's how I imagine I sound on all my podcast episodes. So maybe it sounds just as sexy to y'all. And with that note, I'm going to leave y'all. And here's the episode. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of A Comedy Advice Podcast. My name is Stefan Satani, and I am your host. Joining me today is the specialist of guest lists. He was Oleg on Two Broke Girls, stars alongside Jamie Foxx in the sitcom Dad, Stop Embarrassing Me on Netflix. He can do over 150 impressions, and he's going to be in Phoenix at CB Live June 16th and the 17th. Everybody, please welcome actor and comedian Jonathan Kite. What's up, dude? How are you, man? Oh, I'm good. So I, I, I felt like my energy was way too high. Should I lower it down? No, 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 no. You know what it is, is that I just, I quit coffee. So I haven't had caffeine in about two weeks. So I'm, I think my, all my levels are just sort of leveling. Uh, but I think you're, you're probably, that is probably the way that I am 99% of the time. And I just think like, you know, um, I'm trying to be more present like here. And, uh, uh, and uh, cause I know like I, we, we talked off mic and I have a, uh, 
I'm in Austin right now. Love it. Just doing podcasts and have a, a couple shows tonight that I'm really looking forward to. Um, but just, I know that I got a long, long day ahead. Oh man. Well, good for, you know, I actually just got back together with coffee. So it's, good. it's kind of strange how that works out. So I am, I'm just pumped, ready to go. I was drinking a lot of that cold brew, but now it's just a little shot of espresso. So it's minimal, minimal caffeine, at least as far as coffee goes on the spectrum. Yeah, but. for sure. I mean, I definitely uh, drank too much of it. I was drinking over a thousand milligrams a day. So some might call that an addiction. Uh, at least that's what the, uh, the the judge in court said. So we, um, <laughs> I just had to, I just had to stop. I just had to, I just I just had to like literally take a break and just say, you know what, you just need a little time off. But I feel great. I mean, I it's doing doing comedy without caffeine is is uh, it's been interesting to say the least, but it's been cool. Oh man, that sounds amazing. Doing comedy without caffeine that almost sounds like a documentary as well. So. It's without Sounds. some sort of substance, substance free comedy that is without coffee Ooh. or booze. It's yeah, that's amazing. And speaking of doing comedy, I know you just talked about your shows in Austin, you've got the shows in Phoenix coming up. Yes, how has it been getting back into comedy after taking a little hibernation? Well, I was in Gilbert, Arizona, actually, like a few months ago, and I've Ooh. been back and forth to Austin so. I've gotten a chance to do a little bit out of town. I mean, I've, I've tried to keep, I've tried to do as much in LA as possible um, doing it, but it's, yeah, I mean, it's definitely yeah. a new normal just because like you, the elephant in the room, I don't even care if people like are COVID deniers or, or they are anti-vaxxers. It doesn't even matter. It's just that that's been the, on everyone's plate for a year. And so acknowledging it, but then sort of, you know, the shelf life of the COVID material that I was doing, it's, it, you know, it's done. It's just like, I don't need it. I don't need to do it. And it, so the good news is because the way that the world has been rapidly, at least the States I've visited, been opening up again, it's led to a lot more um, sort of opportunities for writing and sort of the stuff that maybe you were doing a week ago is not current anymore because the restrictions have been lifted. So you can't lean on old material. So it's been an incredible exercise just from a, a writing standpoint. Of, of being able to keep the audience engaged. You know, it's like, it's like, you don't talk about like Clinton's presidency. It's like, he's not president anymore. So you sort of have to live in the moment. I mean, and obviously there's evergreen material like relationships and, you know, you know, whatever family and stuff like that. But um, it's, it's cool to sort of be as present as you can. So I try to update the first five or 10 minutes of my act at all the time to make it as current Dang. of what's going on. So that's been different than it, than it was, you know, like a year and a half ago or whenever I stopped touring. Yeah, that's really interesting. And just to give you a little bit of a sneak peek of Phoenix, at least from what I've been seeing, going out is I th people have stopped even wearing masks at this point, yeah. which we're turning, we're basically Florida now. So um, I think most places will be like, I think, you know, out here, nobody wears a mask unless you're going to get in an Uber or a Lyft or whatever. Yeah. In, in Los yeah. Angeles, um, in, on the 15th, uh, which is, you know, right around the corner, it's like everything will be open. Wow. That's that's incredible. And I, I remember I was listening to an interview of yours where, uh, where you were talking to someone, you were saying that I know you had your back to school special where you actually went back to Skokie, Illinois, and uh, did a, your special in the auditorium at your yeah. old high school. Yeah. And I know you were talking about working on a new hour at that point. I think it was last year. Uh, is that uh, are we getting a whiff of some of that material or like a new hour? Or is this what type of material you so I was trying to do working. the hour actually in 2020. I had already had it set up. I was going to do nice. this okay. amazing venue in L LA um, that I had been to that I really just was inspired by. And um, then the oh. you know a few months later, obviously the world went to shit. But it um, right you know I think I got it. I, I, I part of it is I want to see how I'm able to because like the thing with the back to school special was it was very of the moment. And so it, it's like, it's sort of, it, it was like talking about a, the Cold War. You know what I mean? Like now it seems so in the past or whatever. And so trying yeah. to make stuff is current, but, but, but also being evergreen at the same time, like, uh, like understanding mm -hmm. the changing world. Like I talk a lot about cryptocurrency 
in this new stuff that I'm working on nice. or, um, you know, sort of people's idea maybe of the vaccine. Cause these are things that are now going to be with us, but mask yeah. jokes, which I didn't really do. They don't make sense anymore. It's to my, for me, now maybe somebody could come out with a mask joke. I mean, anything could be funny, right? You can make a joke about the cold war today could still be funny, but I think right. in terms of what I'm working on, I'm trying to do enough stuff that makes sense in the moment but that won't feel dated and so i've got to figure that out and that's going to take a little bit of time just because of the varying degrees that places have opened i see but yeah, i think that, so i'm working on the hour like what i do in phoenix for for uh next week it's it's going to be the assemblance sort of the assemblance of an hour mm, i see that that's really cool and i remember you also talking about is going to the 150 plus impressions that you do. I know that you were doing Trump even before um, he had yeah, become I president. Yeah, got president. Yeah, I was doing him for a long time. Uh, you know, I mean, I think at the end of the day, for, he's a public figure, figure like anything else, you know, right. certainly more famous than almost every president that got nominated before him. And so right. I could get away with doing that. But I don't, you know, I don't really, um, the only thing was like with impressions, I try to, I do micro impressions now just because, uh, um, then if, because if you, you know, fame is such a, a weird thing, it always has been, but it's weirder now than ever, because somebody is famous for like a minute, or they're maybe only famous on a specific platform. And because there's so many platforms, that it's like, I like to do a, a, a quick impression of somebody, you know, punchline, set up punchline, whatever. And if people get it, they laugh. And if they don't, I don't, I'm not doing like 15 minutes or 20 minutes on, on somebody that, that it's like, oh, half the audience, like they don't know who that guy is. And so it's like you, you allow yourself to sort of tap into that because I love doing impressions and I love um, sort of bringing that dimension to my act and sort of having mm -hmm. it like a variety show. I, I grew up watching guys and really admiring guys like Martin Short and um, and Robin Williams is my, you know, probably my idol and you know, of all time, you know, just to give people that. But but because people's focus and their interests are so divided now it's like people only have hulu so if like you're doing something that's like on you know disney plus or whatever someone's like i don't have that i don't know what that is so it's like you gotta you know you you gotta sort of understand that that not everybody has everything and you know i certainly when people become like kardashian level there's like a different right or trump level of right whatever, reality right. stars i call them you know it's like you are able to because the news sort of helps promote them in a way that like falcon and winter soldier are not promoted by any other network which is a damn shame but yes yeah agreed. great show yeah so oh but it's fun i'm having i mean I'm, I'm having a good time that that's really cool and out of the 150 plus you have one that is just really you're super proud of because they're all to me everyone I've heard you do is yeah. so spot on. And I feel oh, thanks, like man. there's a lot of work that's put into it a lot of time and, uh, or maybe not, I don't know, maybe you're just a supernatural and just get it right off the bat. But I, mean, um, I think you can never like, you could always make it better. And especially like, it's always for me, like, I think I could do a voice, but if I can do yeah. a joke with it, I'll bring out a piece of their personality or um, a nuance about them that okay. really makes sense. And what reinforces it is the joke. So I really enjoy finding that, like learning the impression, but also learning, like I did, I've never, I do, I do Al Pacino, but I've never done Al Pacino before on stage. I did him a long time ago, like is a yeah. stupid thing. But um, now I found like a legit way to do Al Pacino. And so it's a very short impression, but it like, that to me is worth doing. I was like, oh, okay, that feels like, like, um, I like that. It doesn't feel hacky. It feels new. Mm. And, um, and I think for me, you know, that that's the, sort of the most important thing to find that angle, to find that point of view that I haven't seen before, instead of just being like, here's my impression of Christian Bale, you know, or whatever. Right, is, you know? right, right. Yeah. That, that, that's one of the things I think about too, because I, I can do two whole impressions, mm. but I don't know, um, I don't know how to place them in a comedic way, if that makes sense. Where do do? <laughs> I can do these are two very different ones, but Owen Wilson and Smeagol. Yeah. Oh, dude, those are. I mean, the good thing about what you just said is those are those. Everybody knows who those people are. Yeah, that's true. You don't. You don't have to be just a Hulu person or Disney Plus. You can. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So, but anyway, I won't. <laughs> Maybe a later in the podcast, we can get to that. But uh, Jonathan, really happy to have you on. We're going to just dive into some advice where we have some questions that are from the Reddit advice column. 
Do so it. Let's do it. Are you are you a good advice giver? Do people listen to you? I mean, <laughs> I don't know if they listen to me. Maybe. I mean, maybe they ask for the advice and then they don't listen to me. They're like, oh, take it from Kite. And then you hear it, you're like, yeah, do the opposite of that. <laughs> no, don't take math advice. I'm so shit at math. But um, but I, oh. I, I don't know. Maybe we'll see. Maybe we'll, we'll find out the subject, maybe. They're both math questions. No, I'm kidding. They're not. Whatever they're, they're my answer is the opposite. This is kind of, actually, this one might be. Here, well, I'll, I'll go ahead and read it. It says, mother keeps bringing food over to my apartment by airplane the usda recommends that cooked food should stay at room temperature for no more than two hours my mother however would always bring food for me to bring to my college city to eat and the flight from there is more than two hours i don't know what to do when my mother would force me to eat the food that is probably bad by the end of the flight it still tastes good but i worry about my health what should i do so i mean i think about expiration dates and like that those are guesstimations number one okay. but I think right now we sort of are so locked into like what's the like what is this and what is that like how like we do it with gps right like how long will it take me to get there seven minutes exactly seven minutes but there is mm. wiggle room like that's not the universe right it's like not all strawberries are going to decay or start to go bad at the same time so number one right. maybe she should pack it in ice or like with ice packs or something like that right like do yourself a favor that way that's but also idea. maybe have a conversation with your mother about not bringing cottage cheese or it's like how old you know is the thing that she's bringing over i mean is it like day old like you know salami that's been in the sun cooking for a while and then we just get in a goddamn plane Number one, and also right. people do not appreciate it on the plane i think his mother needs to know that nobody wants because it's not even like that she's she's like a long version of post-its right or postmates or whatever it's like that's right you're just that's like right. you're just stinking up an airplane for food that you're not even eating it's like there's got to be a better delivery system than your mom it's like the pony express for old food it's like that the happened. oregon trail of postmates yeah. and, and you know what happened to them they died of dysentery so oh that's probably, that's probably not good for his digestive system not good yes gary ate a lasagna and died of dysentery on the oregon trail so you gotta you gotta I think exactly like you said, maybe grilled asparagus. That might be a good one. Or like but vegetables. Also, he probably has grilled asparagus in his place. Like what is she bringing him that doesn't exist? Where Number one is where is he going to college that they don't have food? Literally, what is she bringing to the table here? I think yes. we're, we're asking. That, we, yeah. that, that, be, that, that is worth his health. Now, obviously, if it was like, let's say it's baklava. She makes great baklava. I don't know these people. But I'm saying that, that right. she makes something that's, that's excellent that you cannot deny. I'm like, okay, fine. But but don't be bringing like, like, shit that just goes bad in like don't don't be bringing uni, just like sea urchin, in a heated plane, hundreds of miles, thousands of miles, and being like eat up as soon as we get there. It's like that really feels less about the food and more that this woman is like putting her son through weird trials of trust. That's like, right. Trust your mother. That's, yeah, I brought a gallon of milk for you to drink too. It, it's a little blinky, but how did yeah. you get it? Yeah, how did she? How is she getting all this food on the plane? That's an excellent, excellent question. Yeah, I don't know. Smuggler of a mother. All right. Well, we've got one more question. Um, this one it says, "My friends can't afford to do what I want to do. I've seen a lot of articles about being the poor friend who can't keep up with their friends' lifestyles. But what about when it's the other way around?" I wouldn't classify myself as rich by any means and was most definitely broke for the first 28 years of my life. But now my business, which I worked extremely hard for, is starting to earn decent money. Now I want to go on holidays, which none of my friends can afford. Do I just go alone? I'd be open to making new friends, but I wouldn't know where to start at 31 years old. So it depends on where city this guy is in, because I think some cities like New York and LA, certainly Austin, which I'm enjoying uh, staying here, they there's a bit of an older crowd you know chicago is a, a little bit like that too um the problem is uh i think number one travel alone there's no there's no i've done it a ton yeah. of times. there's no reason to not do Agreed. it because my schedule is so crazy first time i went to italy was alone and it was just like it doesn't matter like i wanted to go nobody was free or they couldn't afford it and i, and I was like i had time off so i'm like fuck it i'm going to see the pope and the thing is, you don't ever let other people, first of all, stop you from doing the things that you want to do. And number two, you will meet people on the road 
now I, I know people there and I go back and I see them. And so you, you nice. want to create like a network of people that, that has complete to do with you where money isn't an issue because you're visiting them. So it's more of a location thing. And then, you know, but, but, but broaden your horizons. I mean, don't, this isn't like this social media exists for a reason. I feel like this is the positive thing about social media apps like Facebook and whatever. There's groups, go join a tour. That's the coolest thing. Or, or like if you, you know, you go to Italy and you want to go on a bunch of tours. That's what I did when I was walking around. I just joined tours. And then you meet people on those tours. That's right. Julia Roberts did that. Need pray love, I think. Too. And look how well it turned out for her. <laughs> made a gaggle of friends. Just so many. I and so much <sighs> money that movie made. But oh. but it's but it's just like what's up, dude? Yeah, you're good. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's like um, you know, I think I think it's it's about sort of doing the things that you want to do and not waiting around until you run into somebody whose whose values or because the people who want to do that thing are doing the thing. So you're not going to be able to look in the people in your media. If, if, if nobody in this room um, is like, do you guys want to go to like this? No, they don't. Okay, well then what do I do? Yeah, because the people that want to go to Italy are not in this room. They're outside in Italy. So you have to go find those people. And that's the way the world works, right? Like serendipity. I mean, it wasn't just a John Cusack film. It's like you, you've got to go out and find those people. And you could find people that will introduce you to things that you didn't even know you wanted to do. But if you're going to be around people who can't afford it, which by the way, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that when they can, maybe that they will be there and then you will be the guide for everyone where you're like, hey, I used to remember those trips in Italy. Now I have all these friends here. Exactly. Exactly. So when your friends are treating your local friends are treating you like shit, you can run away to your Italy friends, too. And yes. you have a place of solace. Absolutely. Mamma Mia, what a beautiful way to end this podcast. Jonathan, thank Just you. <laughs> thank you so much for joining. Really looking forward to your shows in Phoenix. There's going to be a link That's in the great. show notes. Wanted to ask, um, what yeah. else would you like to plug? Where can people follow you? What, have, what have, um, I'm on social media at Jonathan Kite, J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N-K-I-T-E. That's Instagram. That's Twitter. And um, yeah, I got a new show on Netflix with Jamie Foxx called Dad, Stop Embarrassing Me. I'm on a new show on Hulu that's from the Robot Chicken people. Uh, Pat Oswalt is a lead. It's called Modoc. It's a Marvel show uh, with stop motion animation. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, all this stuff's co coming out, but don't have an air date for that stuff. So um, those, that's what, yeah, that's it right now. The two broke girls still in reruns. Oh, that's awesome. Well, yeah. thanks again for joining. Really appreciate having you. And, thanks, Kevin. Uh, I appreciate it. And good luck with your shows in Austin. Thank you so much, man. I'm really, these are so fun. Can't awesome. wait, though. I'm excited. I love, I love Phoenix. I performed there many times in Arizona, and I really like the people there. So really looking forward to getting back out there. Awesome. Yeah, we're looking forward to having you. So. Thanks, man. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, my goodness. What an amazing episode. Thank you guys so much for listening. A shorty, a quickie, but sometimes a quickie is necessary, right? You just got to get in, get out, and um, leave smiling and satisfied. And I hope you guys are smiling and satisfied. I know I am. And if you want, if you have any more cravings in the middle of the night for some more ACAP, please subscribe, leave a review, comment follow me on instagram got some little funny clips there follow jonathan support him watch his shows and go see him in phoenix you little gems you sapphires you rubies you no you're not pearls you're not pearls you're not that basic you guys are extraordinary works of art and i love you guys so much and that's all gooch smooch Mwah. bye bye